Hello there, people. So today I am bringing you my complete melee class loadout guide. I'll be going over some of the best melee class specific armor and accessories for all stages of the game on all platforms. I'm going to include some general weapon recommendations, but I'm not including a lot of details on statistics and how exactly to get everything. There are tons of weapons, so those ones that I mentioned are not the only good options, uh, but I'll try to include the best, uh, most of the best options. Um, I'm also going to throw in some links in the description to some of my other videos to go into, uh, you know, full coverage of the weapons and more detailed guides on uh, certain aspects of the things I'm going to talk about. But let's get into pre-hard mode loadout. So early in the game, uh, the wood and armor, uh, the ore-based armor, are not class specific. So um, the stuff you're going to cut down and dig up, your, your wood and your basic ore armor, um, they're not class specific. You can mix and match weapons at that stage of the game. Now, obviously you're going to want to start out with whatever armor you can get. I like to drive uh, and go for the silver or tungsten tier armor as quickly as possible. Uh, it's not really necessary to go for gold or platinum. You can, it's extra defense, but it's pretty time consuming. So uh, usually at that stage, I skip to you know something a little better than that uh, more easily with a little less time. Uh, as far as weapons, broadswords and spears are gonna be uh, kind of generally best for melee very early in the game. You can find things like the basic spear and even the trident fairly easily. Uh, you can find an enchanted sword uh, without too much trouble. I did do a guide on that. On the um, updated platforms, it's a lot easier to find the enchanted sword because of the sword shrines, and you can also get the Arcalis. So uh, that's something that's worth doing fairly quickly. Of course, you're probably going to start with you know even a wooden broadsword or some basic ore base broadswords but when you get out exploring you can actually get a whole bunch of different things uh, so some examples you can buy a katana from the traveling merchant you can find a bone sword you can uh, get an exotic scimitar actually from your guide uh, if I recall it that might be on the updated platforms only um, but your die trader when he dies uh, will drop this on the updated platforms. Uh, not every time. I, I kind of had a guide on that as well. Uh, NPC drops and how to murder them, sort of famous. But uh, anyway, some other options, you can get a purple clubber fish. If you have a corruption world, you can go fishing there. You can get a rock fish by fishing uh, underground on uh, any world or version. You can get a star fury up in the sky islands. You can get, uh, again, from fishing a godly well, not a godly falcon blade, but a falcon blade. Mine happens to be godly. Um, and yeah, a little further along. Actually, um, if you're lucky, if you happen to have gone through the Halloween event recently, uh, or you don't mind changing the time on your device, or you want to wait until next year, you can get this bladed glove, which is really awesome. Um, does a ton of damage just because of its speed. Uh, you can... The holiday uh, Christmas event, uh, seasonal event is coming soon too. So the fruitcake chakram and the uh, candy cane sword are options you can get from presents during that as well. Um, you can find these, uh, the chain knife, it's pretty good. And uh, you can go fishing for a swordfish. There's a lot of options early in the game that, you know, almost anything will do. Obviously, you're going to want to go with the uh, the best that you can get. Also, on the updated platforms, yo-yos are a really good option for melee players. Uh, so even your basic wooden yo-yo, you can craft that really quickly. Uh, and it's, it's worth something. You can see um, the thing about yo-yos is you can score a lot of hits very quickly. So I really like them. Uh, and of course, better yo-yos are going to do more damage and more range and so on. Um, so uh, as far as uh, accessories and upgrades and stuff, once you defeat the Eye of Cthulhu, you can craft the uh, Light's Bane sword or the uh, Blood Butcher, depending on whether it's a Corruption or Crimson World. Uh, those are good options if you don't have something better by then. Um, and on the updated platforms as well, again, with those yo-yos, uh, you might actually be better off instead of crafting the Light's Bane or the Blood Butcher, in my opinion, you might want to go for uh, Malaise or Artery Yo-Yo. So there you go. Again, you can score a lot of hits very quickly with those yo-yos. You'll probably want a combination because um, broadswords are good for fending off enemies. Yo-yos are good for doing a lot of damage and other types of things as well. Of course, there's boomerang type weapons. You can find your basic wooden boomerang. You can find your enchanted boomerang. I'm not a big fan of them personally, but um, again, the fruit fruitcake chakram is basically a boomerang as well. Um, 
And yeah, you're gonna wanna look into uh, accessories a bit. So uh, you can craft a, a white string. Uh, if you're on the updated platforms, you can craft a white string and you can dye it into another color string for your yo-yo, which will extend its range. Uh, you can also get um, a counterweight from either the traveling merchant or the skeleton merchant. Uh, and those, you know, you can equip them. You don't get a lot of accessories early in pre-hard mode, but uh, so you'll have the slots free for things like that. Uh, it's also possible to craft a phase blade on all platforms. Uh, Pre-update, I think it's 15 meteorite bars, post-update 20 uh, and 10 of any gem regardless of the platform. So you're gonna need 15 to 20 meteorite bars and 10 gems to craft a phase blade, which is a great option early on. Um, and yeah, actually, once you get to the jungle, you can craft the Thorn Chakram, which, uh, again, is a boomerang-type weapon. I like this one a little more, though, because although uh, generally it kind of works like a boomerang, um, it bounces off surfaces, so in small, confined spaces, it can do a lot of damage. And, of course, uh, the other thing is you can fire it. Boomerangs, in general, you can fire fairly quickly at close range. They take a little longer at a, a farther away range, so keep that in mind as well. Uh, in Corruption Worlds, you might want to um, defeat the Eater of Worlds and get your Shadow Armor because that is a melee set. In Crimson Worlds, if you defeat the Brain of Cthulhu, you'll get um, the Crimson Armor as, instead, which is not class-specific, actually. Uh, it has kind of general boosts. Um, and again, in uh, Corruption Worlds, actually, by defeating the Eater of Worlds, you can also, in, if you're in expert mode, you can get the Worm Scarf, which is a very powerful accessory, which basically takes off a fairly large percentage uh, defense, 17%, if I recall. So if you're an expert, that's definitely worth doing. So also in terms of accessories, uh, early in the game, even before defeating those bosses, uh, you can get accessories like the Hermes boots, rocket boots, um, grappling hook mounts to help with your movement. You're not going to get a lot of boosts to your uh, offensive or defensive output at this point in the game. Uh, but if you are on one of the updated platforms, you can also get the uh, shark, tooth, shark tooth necklace from Blood Moons. And uh, that's actually a fairly misunderstood accessory. It uh, effectively decreases your enemy's um, defense. It says increases armor penetration by five, but what that actually means is it decreases uh, your enemy's defense by five, which uh, makes that actually very useful all through pre-hard mode. Um, and also other things like the charm of myths, uh, actually band of regeneration, the upgrade to that is that. Um, and so yeah, a little further along, uh, you can also get Cobalt Shield from the dungeon, Feral Claws from the underground jungle shrines, uh, and the Magma Stone from the underworld. So speaking of the underworld, it's actually technically not necessary to defeat the Brain of Cthulhu or the uh, Eater of Worlds. You can um, skip straight down to the underworld if you go fishing for uh, Reaver Sharks. So uh, melee players specifically, uh, particularly, and perhaps even other classes, but uh, particularly melee players are going to ultimately want the Molten Armor in pre-hard mode. That's gonna be the best set uh, for melee players particularly. It has the highest defense of all sets in uh, pre-hard mode. And it also gives you some boost to your melee power. So um, you can see the set bonus, 17% extra melee damage. Plus it has this cool effect, but um, that is basically the ultimate melee set for pre-hard mode. And the thing is that uh, normally you would need to defeat either the Eat of Worlds or the Brain of Cthulhu to get the right pickaxe to be able to mine the Hellstone to make the Molten Armor. But you can go fishing for uh, the Reaver Shark in the ocean. And uh, if you get that Reaver Shark, you can actually skip those bosses and go straight down to the Underworld. Uh, go ahead and go fish it or go... Uh, scavenging, mining for uh, Hellstone. And uh, of course to do that, you're basically just gonna need to dig down far enough to the underworld. Uh, you'll wa probably want some obsidian skin potions to protect you from the lava. The Hellstone is generally under the lava. Uh, but yeah, get some obsidian skin potions ready, go down there, mine it, and uh, you can get that molten armor actually pretty quickly. So most speedrun players particularly will just do that. They'll skip those bosses, go down to the other underworld, get some Hellstone and uh, make the Molten Armor as well. 
Um, the hellstone itself is plentiful, but you will also need obsidian, and either you'll need to find some obsidian skin potions, uh, or you'll need to craft them using obsidian, and obsidian is where water meets lava, so you can actually drain some water onto lava or vice versa uh, to make sure that you get some obsidian as well. Anyway, once you've got past that, um, once you're fairly late in pre-hard mode at that point, you'll want to consider weapons like the beekeeper, the blade of grass, um, so I've got some of those here. Beekeeper, you can get the Mirror Massa from the dungeon. It's not a big upgrade, but it's very fast. Uh, the Beekeeper from the Queen Bee. Um, Blade of Grass, you can craft that from Jungle Ingredients. Fiery Greatsword from Hellstone. Uh, Hellstone Bars specifically, so you'll need the Obsidian for that. Um, and you can, uh, even better to that, you can combine swords. So if I actually take... Uh, four swords, either the Light's Bane, Light's Bane or the uh, Blood Butcher, the Mirror Massa from the Dungeon, the Blade of Grass from the Jungle, and the Fiery Great Sword. You can see they sort of represent the different biomes as well. You can then combine those. Um, you will need to actually go to an altar to do that, a Demon Altar or a Crimson Altar. Uh, and you can combine those four swords into the Knight's Edge, which is an awesome sword, uh, the most powerful sword in pre-hard mode by most measures. And uh, so that's gonna be, as far as swords, the ultimate thing. You can also get uh, various other weapons though, of course. So if you're on one of the updated platforms, again, you can get uh, yo-yos. Uh, this Amazon, you can actually get earlier uh, in pre-hard mode if you're willing to venture deep down into the jungle to get the ingredients. So that is quite a powerful one. You can also get the code one from the traveling merchant. You can get the valor and you can get the cascade from, uh, I believe that's the underworld. So, um, obviously, powerful powerful yo-yos are going to be that much better. And if you uh, equip some of those accessories, like the string and the counterweight, those yo-yos are going to be that much more powerful. You can see there. You got that little extra one. And the string gives you extra range. Um, the counterweight gives you extra hits. And so that's why if you are on one of the updated platforms, the yo-yos are a very good way to go. Um, another thing you can do while you're still in pre-hard mode, again, if you defeat the Queen Bee, you get the Witch Doctor NPC, which allows you to craft, f uh, allows you to buy the imbuing station. That's this thing right here. Uh, once you buy that imbuing station, you can craft flasks. There's only two that you can do in pre-hard mode, uh, which are the flasks of fire and the flasks of poison. But as you progress through the game as a melee player, those flasks are going to be very important ultimately. And uh, again, one more thing for those updated platforms, you can also find the sharpening station in uh, underground cabins. If you see one, you're gonna wanna just use your pickaxe and mine that out. Um, and what that does is it allows you to uh, basically buff your uh, melee weapons, whatever they might be. And you can see you get this little buff here, um, armor penetration. So again, that effectively decreases your enemy defense. And uh, that's most of it for pre-hard mode. So uh, one second and we'll get onto hard mode. Actually, I just wanted to take a second to, to show kind of the ultimate pre-hard mode uh, loadout here. So you've got your uh, molten armor, of course, um, accessories such as the shark tooth necklace, cobalt shield, which you can upgrade to the obsidian shield, uh, feral claws, and magma stone. These are actually going to be, uh, these last three are going to be more important later uh, because you can combi combine them with other things. And I went ahead and combined uh, those four swords into a knight's edge, which happened to come out ruthless, so that's helpful. Uh, and I've got my cascade that I showed you, and I'm not sure, I may have forgotten to mention the dark lance, which is another very powerful uh, late pre-hard mode weapon that you can find in the underworld. So you can see that um, Knight's Edge, and I'm getting that fire from the magma stone there. The cascade actually will light them on fire anyway, if you're on an updated platform where you can get that. And the Dark Lance, that's available on all platforms, um, and it's a spear, and it has a, a piercing effect, uh, can score multiple hits as well. So um, those are things that you're going to want to use. And uh, as I say, I'll be right back with hard mode. All right, so early in hard mode, the new ore-based uh, armor sets will provide a nice boost with the right choice of headgear. Of course, um, there are three types of headgear for most of the uh, ore-based sets in early hard mode. So um, you'll want to go with your cobalt or palladium if you can get those quicker, uh, mithril or, or calcum as soon as you can get that. And it's a bit of a question when you get to the adamantite titanium tier, on the other hand. Um, 
if you're in a titanium world, titanium is a good choice. Uh, if you're in an adamantite world, you'll probably want to go, I would say, with the frost armor instead of the adamantite armor, personally. Um, if you have titanium, you can choose either one. You can also, if you've defeated one mechanical boss, you can go up to the hallowed armor if you like, which is more just a general uh, set. But the titanium armor and the frost armor each have unique abilities. So there's some trade-offs there to choose from. Titanium has the shadow dodge, which uh, gives you some temporary invincibility. Frost armor, on the other hand, I like because it's, it allows you to combine both melee and ranged attacks. It boosts both uh, melee and ranged weapons, and it also gives the frost burn uh, debuff on your attacks. So I like that one, but, uh, but personally, uh, that's just a personal choice, partly because I'm also a ranged player. Um, so titanium and hallowed armor at that stage are also good choices. There are, of course, also various new ore-based swords and spears that you can craft as you get those ores. Um, now, interesting thing, this Knight's Edge, because it's ruthless, it's got a bit of a boost, actually is the same attack value as the Adamantite Sword without a modifier. So, um, you know, if you have a Knight's Edge already, it's not a huge upgrade. Even, you know, the higher tier ores are not necessarily a huge upgrade. Of course, you put a modifier on that, it'll be a little bit better. But, um, yeah, so, so that's why, you know, crafting the Knight's Edge in pre-hard mode is so worthwhile. Also worth noting, actually, that you can, in pre-hard mode, if you're on mobile or 3DS, and probably only until the mobile update comes, you can actually get crystal shards in pre-hard mode, which allows you to upgrade a phase blade to a phase saber. Um, on all other platforms, you can only do that a little later in the game, so I'll get to that. But uh, there are a ton of new weapons available, of course, uh, early in hard mode. There are spears uh, that you can make from most of those ores. And those are uh, quite useful as well. And you can get a lot of weapon drops. Um, you might get the Breaker Blade from the Wall of Flesh. You might get a Cutlass from uh, Pirate Invasion. You might be really lucky and get a Beam Sword uh, when you're underground. Um, so there are a ton of weapon options available. You can also get uh, the Ice Sickle, which is a really good one if you happen to get that dropped. Uh, banana Ranks from Clowns in the Hard Mode uh, Blood Moon. Uh, Shadow Flame Knife from the, uh, I think it's the Goblin summer, Summoners in the Hard Mode Goblin Invasion. So there are lots of weapons you can get dropped as well, and those are all good choices, uh, just as examples. Um, and also, uh, at this point, actually, you can, in, in Hard Mode, you can upgrade your Phase Blade to a Phase Saber if you had one of those, uh, because basically you just needed those Crystal Shards. Um, so you can do that on all the, all the other platforms once you're in Hard Mode. Now, uh, if you're on one of the updated platforms, you can also craft this chick yo-yo. You can get a hellfire yo-yo, uh, even potentially right after the wall of flesh. As soon as it's in hard mode, if you're in the underworld, you have the chance of getting a hellfire yo-yo um, as a drop from any enemy there. And also the Amarok uh, yo-yo, I believe that's, uh, if I recall correctly, in the snow biome once you're in hard mode. So uh, if you're on an updated platform, those are all good options as well. Um, and if you are using yo-yos on an updated platform, keep an eye out for the Skeleton Merchant and make sure to buy the yo-yo glove because what you can do then, if you have the yo-yo glove, you can combine that with the string and the um, counterweight that you hopefully got in pre-hard mode and make the yo-yo bag, which gives you uh, actually huge, huge boosts if you are using uh, yo-yos. And let me just demonstrate that quickly uh, with you know even this one. Notice, <laughs> you actually get two counterweights and effectively two yo-yos hitting all your enemies. So um, that yo-yo glove is a really huge boost. Uh, so keep that in mind if you are on one of the updated platforms. Now, there are also, uh, there's a matter of accessories that you might want to get as well. So you can get uh, the warrior emblem if you're lucky as a drop from the wall of flesh. If you don't get it when you kill the wall of flesh, you might want to farm the wall of flesh, whether right away or a little later, to get this because as you can see, 15% increased melee damage. That's going to be very worthwhile. Uh, as soon as you're in hard mode, you may want to consider starting to gather um, the various items, the many, many items to craft the Ankh shield. It's worth having. It's not uh, It's not going to boost your melee per se, uh, but it's worth having it for certain situations where you want to avoid debuffs. Um, you might also get lucky and get a frozen turtle shell from one of the uh, frozen tortoises in the underground snow biome. 
Uh, that can be useful at this stage of the game. Uh, if you are on one of the non-updated platforms, actually, you can craft uh, the Avenger emblem sooner by getting the different emblems and combining them together. So uh, definitely do that if you are on one of those. That uh, You can actually stack a warrior emblem and an Avenger emblem. Uh, that'll become more and more important as you go through hard mode stacking uh, more things to boost your damage further. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of accessories you can get from Mimics as well. Uh, you can get the Titan Glove, you can get the Star Cloak, you can get the Cross Necklace. Those are uh, on all platforms. You can actually um, get the Frostbrand Sword as well from uh, Ice Mimics. And that's on all platforms. You can combine some of these accessories. So you can combine uh, the Cross Necklace and the Star Cloak together. Uh, to get the Star Veil, um, which again at this stage at least is, is reasonably useful for a melee player. Uh, and also you can get, combine the Titan Glove with those uh, Feral Claws from pre-hard mode to get the Power Glove, uh, basically to combine the boosts from both of those. And so that uh, saves you space and, and gives you another nice boost that stacks with the other boosts. And you can see kind of the idea that uh, you're building up um, more and more bonuses and you can stack you know, the Power Glove with an Avenger Emblem and a Warrior Emblem and so on. Um, to just get massive damage output. And that's what's really going to help you uh, as you go through hard mode. Uh, on the updated platforms, you can also get some other stuff like the Flesh Knuckles accessory, uh, the Flying Knife, uh, Chain Guillotines, and um, Fetid Bagnax weapons. So, uh, yeah, Flying Knife is this one. It's, it's sort of like a boomerang, um, but you can hold it in a spot, and as you can see, uh, if you use it right, you can get a lot of damage out of that. Uh, and these also, this is basically an upgrade um, of the bladed glove. Lots more damage very, very quickly, short range. So uh, those are very useful things to have as well. And uh, yeah, once you've uh, defeated all three mechanical bosses, usually, although again, there's an exception on mobile and 3DS, and probably only until that mobile update comes, you can mine Chlorophyte. You may have been lucky uh, on the mobile or 3DS to get uh, the Drax uh, from a shadow chest in the underworld, but uh, otherwise, you have to defeat all three mechanical bosses to craft the things to mine Chlorophyte. And um, the thing about being a melee player is that, uh, you, yes, you can, craft chlorophyte armor, but you're actually better off uh, crafting turtle armor. You just need some turtle shells. You need three turtle shells from uh, giant tortoises in the underground jungle, uh, and you can use those to craft the turtle armor, and you're going to want to do that because uh, not only is the turtle armor better for a melee player than chlorophyte armor, but uh, it can also be upgraded to beetle armor later, which we'll talk about uh, when we get that far. Also, as far as uh, weapons, uh, once you have Chlorophyte um, and you've defeated all three mechanical bosses, you can craft the Chlorophyte Partisan. Uh, this one happens to be shoddy, but uh, normally it would do a little more damage and it has that little cloud that can even go through walls. So uh, that's a very useful weapon. Uh, you can craft uh, Chlorophyte Swords and stuff like that as well. Um, they're a little less useful. Once you've defeated even one of the mechanical bosses, you can also craft the Gungnir. Gungir, Gungnir, I think it is, something like that. <laughs> I've been corrected on that before. Uh, and also uh, around this stage, you can get light discs, which uh, you can get a stack of these, much like the banana rings. Do a lot of damage with those. You can also get uh, the mushroom spear. Um, I think you only have to de defeat one of the mechanical bosses to get that, if I recall correctly. Uh, you can craft the Excalibur from Hallowed Bars, uh, same as the um, this thing. <laughs> and uh, you can also uh, uh, get the Death Sickle if you're really lucky. Um, Death Sickle is an awesome weapon. You can do a lot of damage quickly, so that's another one. Uh, if you're lucky to get that drop, again, we'll check out the, the links for uh, the different videos on different types of weapons if you really want to know the details on uh, these weapons and how to get them. Um, also, yeah... Another thing that, that varies a little bit platform to platform, before the update, uh, you'll be able to get broken hero swords from the solar eclipse after only one mechanical boss has been defeated. Since the update, you need to defeat all three mechanical bosses to get those broken hero swords, and in that case, it's from the Mothron sort of mini boss. Um, if you get any broken hero swords, use them to upgrade your Excalibur and your Knight's Edge. So if you happen to 
make the Knight's Edge, you can then upgrade it to a true Knight's Edge by using a Broken Hero Sword. Uh, same thing for the Exc Excalibur, which you craft from Hallowed Bars. You can then upgrade it once you get a Broken Hero Sword to the true Excalibur. And if you get both of those, true Knight's Edge and true Exc Excalibur, you can combine those together into the Terra Blade. And uh, certainly before the update, this is actually one of the best swords in the game. It's an amazing, awesome sword. Um, it shoots faster when you get melee boosts and so on. So uh, definitely for this stage of the game, particularly, that's going to be really, really useful uh, if you can get those broken hero swords. And um, on the updated platforms, you will need to defeat all three mechanical bosses uh, and get all three types of souls from each of them to craft the Avenger emblem. Again, you could do that earlier on the non-updated platforms. Um, again, ideally, you'll want to keep your warrior emblem as well as your Avenger emblem, and uh, you can equip both of those, stack them up, stack those bonuses together. Um, and also, the Avenger emblem is necessary to make the mechanical glove. You can actually combine the power glove with an Avenger emblem to make the mechanical glove. Uh, and then you can optionally upgrade that with your um, Magma Stone, which you may remember from pre-hard mode, to get the Fire Gauntlet. And I do, I do say optionally, you may want to keep the mechanical glove because technically it actually has a slightly higher boost to melee speed and melee damage. Um, Whereas uh, it has 12% increased melee damage and speed versus this fire gauntlet you can see has 10% increased melee damage and speed. Uh, but the bonus to the fire gauntlet is that it knocks your enemies on fire. Um, the only problem there is that not lighting them on fire is probably going to become decreasingly useful because it's not the most powerful of buffs. Uh, so it's, it's a trade-off there. You can, you can make your choice. <laughs> and also uh, on the updated platforms, the Code 2 and Yelet's yo-yos become available at this point of the game. So I've got a Yelet's there. You can see uh, this happens to be demonic, so it's got like huge crazy damage. Um, but yeah, I, I like yo-yos as a melee player. Um, moving right along though, uh, after you've defeated Plantera, you can also get the Paladin's Shield. That's uh, mostly going to be particularly useful in multiplayer. It has a, a bonus effect. Um, when you're playing multiplayer, basically it draws the damage to you and mitigates the damage for your whole team kind of thing. Um, and you can also get the Paladin's Hammer at that point once you've defeated uh, Plantera. You'll get that in the dungeon. As you can see, huge, huge damage, very impressive weapon. Uh, and there's some other stuff you can get at the same time as well. If you have those biome keys, uh, you can now finally use them. Once you've defeated Plantera, you can get the Scourge of the Corruptor from uh, the Corruption Chest in the dungeon, uh, which fires tiny little baby eaters. These guys home in. You're not going to see that right now, but um, they will home in when there are enemies present. Or if you're in a Crimson world, you can get the Vampire Knives, which of course are pretty famous um, from the Crimson Chest with the Crimson Key in the dungeon. And on the updated platforms, you can get the Kraken yo-yo from the dungeon at this point, or even better, the Eye of Cthulhu yo-yo from Mothron during the solar eclipse. So uh, those are some pretty amazingly powerful. In fact, the Eye of Cthulhu yo-yo is the second most powerful yo-yo in the game. And you can see combined with the um, yo-yo bag accessory doing tremendous damage. So at this point, you're rocking uh, turtle armor. You're going to be playing around with a, hopefully a Terra Blade or a I have Cthulhu yo-yo or uh, maybe some vampire knives. Um, you're going to have a series of emblems here, uh, hopefully warrior emblem, Avenger emblem, um, maybe your fire gauntlet or your mechanical glove. So that should get you pretty prepared to fight the golem. And uh, of course, on the non-updated platforms, golem is sort of the final boss, sort of. Um, he's not really, he's not the very hardest. Uh, but uh, once you've defeated Golem, you can then upgrade to your beetle armor, which I've got in this little uh, case here. And um, this, of course, is going to um, upgrade your defense. And it depends whether you uh, use the scale mail or the shell, um, whether you get defense or offense, basically. So, um, the shell is better for defense, get it, shell, and uh, scale is, is better for damage output. Basically, the um, shell will, will has an increasing, it's, it's one of those sort of gimmicky uh, bonuses with this set. Um, if you avoid damage, you get an increasing 
uh, bonus to how much damage is mitigated, i.e. reduced up to maximum 30%, and uh, versus if you have the scale, it's actually your damage output that gets increased when you're successfully attacking. And uh, you basically need to keep successfully attacking continuously to get up to a 30% damage boost. So that's a very, very powerful um, set of armor right there. Uh, basically, you just need your turtle armor pieces and the uh, beetle uh, husks that you get from the golem, and you can then upgrade that turtle armor to beetle. And you can also, at that point, add a destroyer emblem um, by uh, adding the uh, eye of the golem that you get, uh, if you're lucky, <laughs> it's a one in eight, I believe, uh, to drop from the golem. You can then craft a destroyer emblem, and also you can then craft a celestial stone or a celestial shell. Uh, Pre-update, you can only get to the celestial stone. Uh, with the update, you can craft, uh, combine that with um, the moon shell to make the celestial shell. And uh, that is a very, very powerful accessory that uh, that's often overlooked, actually. Um, for melee players, this is actually more powerful than uh, most of the emblems, especially at night, because the werewolf transformation brings with it some additional boost, specifically for melee players. So um, if you're trying to get the most powerful loadout at this point, you're going to want a celestial shell. You're going to want a destroyer emblem. Um, and probably a warrior emblem or maybe an avenger emblem um, and a mechanical glove or a fire gauntlet. However many you can fit, of course, uh, but that's sort of the order. Um, actually, the, the gauntlet or glove is probably higher than, uh, than maybe these two. But um, yeah, and Golem can also drop the possessed hatchet on all platforms, which is a, a very powerful weapon as well. It's actually more powerful since the update. Before the update, it only fires one at a time, but since the update, you can sort of see there, it's actually firing um, multiple. And uh, being a boomerang type weapon, it fires faster, close in. It's also a homing weapon, which is part of the reason that it's so powerful. Uh, very useful weapon. Um, and yeah, you can also then, once you've defeated the golem uh, and, and you have all that nice gear, uh, you can also do things like the pumpkin moon, the frost moon, uh, you can fight Duke Fishron. So um, the horseman's blade is a very useful item that you can get from the pumpkin moon. Um, with the right setup, uh, basically there, you can set up statue farms with the horseman blade. It fires uh, homing pumpkins when you hit something. It doesn't fire anything when I hit dummies, but uh, it fires homing pumpkins and with a little statue, uh, sort of an enemy generator and you kill those enemies and it fires more pumpkins. There's a, there's a way to sort of game that to make it very, very powerful. You can also get the North Pole, uh, which is sort of a spear, uh, but it fires like some shards down. I covered that in one of my guides and also the Christmas tree sword uh, from the Frost Moon, which you can see uh, is very powerful. Of course, this one being godly is more powerful. And uh, so those are available on all platforms. Um, and one thing that is maybe the most powerful melee weapon on all the pre-update platforms is the Flareon from Duke Fishron. Uh, you can get this on all platforms, but it's going to be very, very powerful on uh, non-updated platforms. There's, there's basically nothing much that's probably more powerful. <laughs> it's a homing weapon. It fires these bubbles. You can see it's, it's like a flail. Um, but it fires these bubbles as it fires out, and you can you can sort of game that as well um, to make it sort of stay out longer and fire maximize the uh, bubble output. <laughs> and uh, the more bubbles, the better off you do. As I say, those are going to be homing bubbles. They will home in on your enemy if you have enemies nearby. Uh, so, yeah, you're not going to see that here, but. Um, that's going to be incredibly powerful if you can defeat Duke Fishron, which hopefully with that gear, I would hope you can hopefully do. <laughs> and also, uh, one thing that's specific to the old gen console, uh, the mobile version until the update comes, and the 3DS version is the Okram boss. So, um, yeah, so that, that's sort of your ultimate end game boss, perhaps uh, either Duke Fishron or Okram on those platforms. Uh, but if you defeat Okram, you can also get the dragon armor. Uh, it's, it's sort of a mixed bag whether that's better than the beetle armor or not. Uh, there's trade-offs there. Basically, the beetle shell, uh, the beetle armor with the shell is going to be the highest defense. Um, but the dragon armor 
versus the beetle armor with scale mail is sort of trade-offs because they both boost, boost your offense. Dragon armor has like static boosts that are good boosts at all times, whereas the beetle armor can be more powerful if you can get that successive attack, continual attack thing going that boosts um, up to 30%. So, you know, you might, uh, you might have the dragon armor for general use and the beetle armor for like against bosses where you're going to be doing continual damage. Uh, just a thought. So the rest of what I'm going to cover is on the updated platforms only. Um, another thing that you can do on the updated platforms after you defeat the golem is get the influx waiver. So the influx waiver comes from the Martian Madness event, the Martian Saucer. Uh, it's, it's a definite upgrade. You can see that's very high damage output. Um, and that's actually not modified. That's, uh, you know, I mean, it has a modifier, but you can see that modifier doesn't affect the, the actual base damage. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a higher critical strike chance than it would normally have, but very high base damage. And uh, it basically does like a, a little triple strike thing when you hit an actual enemy. Uh, let me just show you that quickly. Yeah. You can see those little extra sword strikes. So that's a very useful uh, sword on the updated platforms. Um, and then after you, that's the only thing that you would do immediately after Golem, but before the Lunatic Cultist and the Lunar Events. So you might want to grab that in between. Um, then you'll want to fight the Lunatic Cultist. Um, you might want to use the Possessed Hatchet uh, as a good option for that or uh, maybe Vampire Knives, um, but homing weapons can be good, so Scourge of the Corruptor, Possessed Hatchet, even though there's actually a penalty um, for those against the Lunatic Cultist because he does move so fast, it's still useful. Uh, and after you've defeated the Lunatic Cultist, you'll probably want to take on the Solar Pillar first among the four uh, Celestial Pillars uh, because from that you can use the solar fragment to craft the solar eruption and the daybreak and these are both incredibly powerful weapons each have their own um, their own benefits uh, shall we say um, solar eruption is gonna be good against crowds <laughs> and good against crowds and good because it can actually fire right through blocks so you can actually use this against Moon Lord. You can you can actually put yourself in a box with lots of uh, regeneration and defensive stuff. He can't shoot very much through the box, uh, and you can actually just stab him with it. Um, both of these inflict the day the day broken buff or debuff actually. So one's called the Daybreak, but they both inflict Day Broken, uh, which is that fiery effect there. That's not the regular on fire. You can see it's actually doing 25 per tick there. Uh, so that's very, very powerful. Um, and the Daybreak actually can be very useful against Moon Lord too. Uh, you do need to be in an open area, but you can actually stick a whole bunch of these, up to eight of them, um, to one target. And by doing so, you get that huge uh, up to 200 uh, damage per tick situation there. Uh, so you can get both of those before Moon Lord and they'll be very helpful when fighting Moon Lord. Um, and then after you've defeated Moon Lord, you get some of the ultimate stuff in the game. You then can get the Solar Flare armor, uh, which is, you know, it's the end game um, melee set. It's definitely by far the highest defense. It's not necessarily, uh, beetle armor can actually do more damage, but um, solar flare armor definitely has the highest uh, defense and also a higher critical strike. You can see 17% uh, critical strike. It also has this dash capability with accompanying explosion and you can see that does a lot of damage as well. So uh, it's not going to boost your weapons as much, but it's going to give you some uh, some other very nice benefits. Uh, you can also get some very nice weapons from the Moon Lord, of course. The Star Wrath, the Meow Mir. Uh, those are, of course, the most infamous swords. And you can see um, they do huge, huge damage. Like incredibly, incredibly massive damage. Um, but that being said, Meow Meow Meow. Uh, I actually like the Terrarian. Um, the Terrarian is the third weapon. Any of these can be dropped. It's a uh, one in nine, if I recall correctly. Uh, there's nine different things I think he can drop. Or is it one in seven? Anyway, um, he's going to drop one of a set of things. And these are three of those sets, whether it's uh, nine or seven. I think it's nine. <laughs> but you can see, you combine that with that yo-yo bag. 
and you're going to do some tremendous, tremendous damage. And you can just kind of flail this around. So for my money, I really like the Terrarian. Um, it's arguably perhaps the highest uh, DPS weapon in the game for melee players. But let's... Uh, you know what, I'm not even going to bother with the swords, honestly. <laughs> Let's get set up. I'm going to show you uh, kind of my ultimate uh, melee setup here now. And I'm going to do that versus our good buddy, <laughs> the Eye of Cthulhu. So how are we doing for time? Yeah, it's going to take a few minutes. I will uh, load that up and be right there. Okay, so uh, let me just take a moment to explain first before we actually start this fight. Um, for my money, the Celestial Shell is probably the most important uh, accessory in terms of uh, damage output. Uh, obviously, you're probably going to want some wings or something for mobility. You can actually get rid of the wings. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do that. I can get rid of the wings because I have a UFO mount. Um, so I can actually combine all of these and I can stack all of these. So uh, this is actually about 15% increase to damage output and 15% uh, melee speed for a melee player. Some of those, um, the extra 5% on each of those is from the werewolf transformation at night. Uh, and so that's when this is most powerful, but that's also when you're going to be fighting most events and bosses at night. So uh, that's why that becomes so powerful. And then you're gonna actually stack that with uh, the 10% increased damage and 8% critical strike from the destroyer emblem, um, the fire gauntlet increased melee damage and speed. Again, you may want to go with um, the mechanical glove instead. Fire gauntlet is 10%, uh, mechanical is 12%, but this will light your enemy on fire. <laughs> and warrior emblem, 15%, uh, avenger emblem, 12% increased damage. Um, so imagine, just think about all of the bonuses all stacked together, how much bonus damage we're going to do with all of those. Now, if you are a yo-yo player, you may want to, well, you're probably definitely going to want to uh, swap the yo-yo bag in there. Of course, if you're on expert, you'll have one more slot as well. Um, so there you can either, you know, use your, your wings or your bag, but uh, you're better off actually using a mount like the uh, UFO mount, for instance, which gives you mobility anyway, unlimited flight and such, and then you can actually stack more accessories. So this is kind of, I would say this is the ultimate damage output right here. Um, so let's summon our good buddy and see how fast he dies. Hey, buddy. Look at that. One hit. Oops. One hit, and he uh, just went straight into that. And I did just mess that up by accidentally getting on the teleporter. Okay. Um, okay, you know what? That wasn't going to be very effective anyway. So let's just go and fight the lunatic cultist. Why not, right? Well, actually, I can tell you why not. But these guys certainly aren't going to stand much of a chance. Right, that's what the mount was for. Okay, so then, I mean, I can fire a bunch of those at him. <laughs> can use the flare on. And, having taken all kinds of damage, I can swap in my yo-yo bag and show you the sweet, sweet terrarium. Who's gonna die first, cultist? It's you. It's you. You thought I was gonna lose that, didn't you? <laughs> so there you go. That's how powerful that is. See how much health my good buddy, the terrarium, took down that fast. And so there you go. <laughs> Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, despite my casualness on that boss fight, you can see how that power took him out anyway. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Bye for now.